Ms. Mehk, over to you. Thank you, JD. Um, good, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, hope you all are safe and healthy at uh, your house. Um, we'll start with the webinar. A uh, few points to take care while we are on the, uh, we are, we start with the webinar. Uh, all the speakers, uh, all, the part, all the attendees are on mute and all the panelists can only speak. I would refrain anyone to uh, share any links on the chat box. If you have any questions, you can put it on the question box that is on the bottom panel uh, on your Zoom uh, interface. Uh, if you cannot hear us or uh, if, the, if there are any technical issues, you can put it on the chat box. Uh, I will be there uh, throughout the webinar to help you with any technical problems you're facing. All right. Um, so, uh, so the moderator for the evening is Mrs. Sumas Tuljapurikar. Uh, uh, I welcome Mrs. Sumas Tuljapurikar. He is the founder and director of Legacy Services and managing partner of Legacy Partners. To give you all uh, a brief introduction about Mrs. Sumas, uh, is he he has worked as an in-house counsel with companies like Dudat, SR, and Ron Hindustan Labor. Suhas is also a member on multiple committees. He's a member of the Technical Advisory Committee for NFRA. He's a chairman of the Legislation Committee and Executive Committee of Paratha Chambers. He's co-chair for the Corporate Governance Committee and member of Legal and IPR Cell. And also, he's a part of Bombay Chamber of Commerce and in 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 Industry. He's member of ISACA, Global Tourism Council and Blockchain Council. He's also trustee of Tehran, that is Trust for Retail and Retail Associates of India. During his formative years, Suhas worked on research team on the Parliamentary Consultation Committee for Consumer Protection Act. He has advised various FMCG companies on subject of advertising claims and surrogate advertising. Suhas holds the distinction of managing around 2.3 lakhs consumer cases across various districts, states, and in the center for an automotive journey. Maybe a record in itself, right? He's known for his pioneer work in consumer litigation related in insurance policy. Welcome, Suhas. To move on, I would like to introduce uh, Ms. Deepa Gita Krishnan. Am I audible to everyone? Yeah. Sure. Deepa was with Love and Intas for around 25 years, and she had it headed creative for Chennai and Bangalore before she went and went on to become the national creative director. She focused on Hindustan Unilever. She left Love and Intas in Jan January 2019 to set up MMO and has been working with clients and agencies like UL, Singapore, Hindustan Unilever, Marico, and Lowell Lintas on both strategic and creative solutions for brand. Welcome, Deepa. I would like to introduce uh, Madhukar Kamath. Madhukar Kamath has over four decades of experience in the area of marketing services, media, and advertising. He was the group CEO and MD of DDB Mudra Group. India's leading integrated, integrated marketing communication group. He has also served as the chairman of Interbrand, the world's leading brand consultancy in India. Madhukar has also led several industry bodies and he has been the president of Advertising Agency of Association of India and chairman of ASCI. He's currently the chairman of Audit Bureau of Circulation and he serves on the board of Music Broadcast India Radio City. He is recipient of the Advertising Agency Association of India Lifetime Achievement Awards. Madhukar was also the chairman of the Mundra Foundation and governing council of MICA, that is India's foremost business school for strategic marketing and communication management. Welcome, Mr. Madhukar. Now I would like to introduce Pranesh Mishra. He's, uh, he's the chairman and managing director of Sanskrit. With more than four decades of experience in brand building, Pranesh considers himself a passionate student of human insights. 
He loves exploring, traveling, and reading to keep himself updated on the way the consumer will think and behave. Something about Brandscapes. Uh, Brandscape is worldwide is a global marketing strategic consulting company that is focused on delivering profitable growth for brands and companies. They help companies discover essential consumers and market truth that power effective growth strategies. Pranesh has built a formidable global company that traces its humble roots to India. Welcome, Mr. Mishra. Now I would like to introduce Sandeep Khosla. Sandeep has over 33 years in the publishing industry across national and regional dailies, magazine, business and trade publications, events and trade seminars and conferences, of which he has spent 20 plus years in leadership roles. He is best known as a CEO at Midday, CEO at Network 18 Publishing, and Group Vice President at Indian Express Newspaper Limited. He was also the producer of annual screen awards, the industry's premium film award show, and the highest rated award show on TV for over 10 years. Sandeep has in depth knowledge of publishing industry, expertise in advertising, marketing, brand, circulation, distribution production with PNL responsibility. Currently, he is a Director General at Bombay Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Welcome, Mr. Kushla. Now, I would like to introduce our Balki. He's, he, unfortunately, he couldn't join us live, but we have few bites from him, and we all know him well. But I would like to give a brief introduction about our Balki. Uh, he is an Indian filmmaker, screenwriter, and former group chairman of the advertising agency Novel and Dance. He is best known for directing Chini Kam in 2007, Pa in 2009, Batman in 2018. His passion had always been filmmaking. He started his career with Mudra at the age of 23. His passion had always been filmmaking. After college, he even applied to Chennai Film Institute to do a course in direction. However, he did not like the panel that interviewed him, so he walked out. Not knowing what to do and having always been interested in computers, he joined the newly begun Masters in Computer Application course at College of Engineering, close to the Film Institute. After studying there for three years, he didn't complete the course due to lack of attendance. According to him, this was mainly because he spent his time playing cricket and watching films. One day, he saw an advertisement in papers by Mudra Communication. He had no idea about the company except the fact that their logo appeared after every episode of Punyad. And so thought it was Ramesh Sufi, the maker of Punyad company. The advert asked people to send in 100 words to describe who they were. He was selected for the first creative training program by the agency, a program that was like testing model for the agency for the creation of Maika years later. Palki was soon addicted to advertising. Palki's ideas have included that Ache Hefer from Surf Excel ad, Jagore ads for Tata T, What an Idea Sorji, Idea Cellular Advertising Campaign, ICI Prudential, St. Robin Glass, and Hamara Bajan, Titania, Prepsodan, and many more. That was a brief introduction to Palki. And now I would like to call Mr. Pooja Purkar to lead the uh, webinar. Thank you very much, Mehek. Thanks a lot, Jaydeep. Uh, thanks to all the panelists. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, Deepa, Madhukar, uh, Pranesh, and Sandeep ji. Uh, thanks for uh, joining us on this subject, which is which needs some awareness. And I'm going to I'm going to therefore lay down uh, a couple of things uh, before we move on to uh, the major discussion. Uh, May I get the screen, please? Okay, is this visible? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so what we what we're looking at today is uh, you know there are certain red flags that the, and and I lay down why we are seeing some of the red flags, and there are green lights uh, probably if we do everything right. 
And therefore the theme that we picked up was actually looking at red flags and the green lights around brand and um, endorsements in the new Consumer Protection Act 2019, which was passed by the parliament about a year ago, exactly last June, June of 2019, and which came into effect in June of 2020. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, uh, Balki is obviously you know, very conspicuous by his absence, but uh, I think thanks to him that he has given his views and I think we would have that uh, played across uh, through the talk that we would have. Just to kind of set the tone, I think during COVID, uh, we always express our gratitude and our gratitude to all those frontliners, uh, doctors, healthcare professionals, uh, law enforcement agencies, and many of the artists who have actually uh, you know, created art during COVID as a, as a form. And that form today is talking about positivism, uh, irrespective of what's happening in the, in, in the world all across. I think uh, expressing gratitude through art has actually paved way for positivism across, uh, uh, across the world today. So a big thank you to all those frontliners, COVID warriors, those artists. As a typical lawyer, I would like to put some caveats on, on record. This is only for general awareness. Uh, don't consider this as legal opinion or advice. The situation is dynamic. And I say that this is dynamic, not because of COVID-19 situation, but Consumer Protection Act itself has seen six atoms being corrected through corrigendum. These are not amendments that have come out, but they're corrigendum that have come out. So actually the, the, the minor clerical errors as the, as the government would want to put it, have been corrected through this corrigendum and the things might change and vary through the experiences that we will get now. Uh, we are going to touch upon a couple of issues uh, in depth and therefore I call this as an eagle's view. Uh, don't claim it to be very, very exhaustive. Uh, therefore, please pardon me if we just take a deep dive on a couple of issues. Uh, a, a very clear caveat that what views and opinions we are expressing are not representative of our, our organizations. Having, having put these caveats on record, I just want to uh, kind of look at what this law is and set the tone from that perspective. You see, for the first time, I think there is a legislative definition of endorsement that's included in the advertisement. And misleading advertisement becomes an issue. Uh, so misleading advertisement not only is false description, false guarantee, uh, express or implied representation that would amount to unfair trade practice, but it is deliberate concealment of informant important information. So concealment of information becomes one of the necessary ingredients into the definition of misleading advertisement. Obviously, the regulatory powers have cease and desist and come back to that very quickly. Uh, the consequences of misleading advertisement, which, which obviously includes endorsements, is that a manufacturer or a service provider, um, you know, a 10 lakh rupee fine for first offense, a 50 lakh rupee fine for second offense, a two year simple imprisonment for first offense and five year simple imprisonment for second uh, offense onwards. Okay, that's broadly what is there for manufacturer and service provider. We have a new regulator on the block, which is the Central Consumer Protection Authority. There is a chief commissioner, which is already designated there. The rules and conduct of business have been prescribed. So this is very much active forum today as a regulator, which is a new and independent regulator that's, that has a statutory backing. We have very clearly investigation into allegations of misleading advertisements can actually be done via the local district collector's office as well. So for the first time we have seen the capacity which is available in the forest and revenue departments of the state governments has been utilized by the central legislation to make sure that the investigative powers are with the district magistrate and district, district collector. You see, the post investigation, uh, the, the, the regulator may issue directions to the trader, manufacturer, endorser, advertiser, or publisher to discontinue the advertisement. And this can be exercised as interim power not wait for final adjudication. Uh, they can also ask the advertisements to be modified. Uh, the penalty for manufacturer or endorsers, endorser is 10 lakh rupees for first offense, 50 lakh rupees for second offense. The 
the space is also kind of very clearly demarcated saying if the publisher or any party who is responsible for publishing misleading advertisement has a defense which is to say that business as usual i didn't look at the content uh, however if business as usual defense is not acceptable then there is a penalty of 10 lakh rupees on the media and the adjudicatory relief and this is very important can be granted by district commission state commission national commission so any district forum in india can actually look at granting relief in the nature of corrective advertisement in the nature of saying cease and desist in the nature of uh, compensation and damages for injury cost uh, again remaking or, or revisiting the endorsement definition i think if somebody makes you believe that it reflects an opinion finding experience of that person making such endorsement that would amount to endorsement and therefore for endorser the fine and penalty is 10 lakh rupees and subsequent contravention 50 lakh rupees what is cascading or what is what is important to look at is that the the ccpa as the authority may prohibit endorser for a period of 1 year for first contravention and 3 years for subsequent contraventions that means and this this these prohibitions are not only for that particular product that's being endorsed but it's for any product that an endorser will endorse so actually the endorsement revenue of an individual may may kind of uh, just just simply vanish for a period of 3 years if if there are more than one contraventions uh, for endorsements that that come to the light the majority uh, defense that is being provided to balance out these uh, these consequences is that and the, i'll read out that because it's an interesting reading no endorser shall be liable to a penalty if he has ex exercised due diligence to verify the veracity of claims made in the advertisement regarding product or services being endorsed by him so that's kind of veracity of verifying the veracity of claim as a phraseology picked up uh, you see the consumer is at the center of the economy today and we have experienced this not only from 2014 but slightly earlier regime as well where we are seeing everyone each one of us is a consumer and that person is at the center of the economy there are no constituencies such as uh, you know farmers industrialist businessmen is the consumer at the center of the economy uh laying down this as kind of a, a, a lay of the ground today i'm going to request each one of uh, the panelists to give their opening remarks and then pick up some of the issues for discussions uh thank you very much uh, i'm going to request deepa to start uh, ladies first sorry deepa you are on mute ma'am um, you are on mute ah okay sorry yeah. so uh, thanks to this forum and this discussion i've sort of been reading for the last 2 3 days on it and i find a lot has been actually written but uh, for me there are more questions than a point of view or an answer and i think the panel and you possibly could you know shed some light on that so on the red light side uh, i just uh, wonder as a creative person a lot of advertising is you know in the hyperbole uh, exaggeration space and it takes from some product truths and you make a you know story out of it so at what point does that become misleading advertising like you know any emotional payoff or any kind of payoff as we call it which is not a direct correlation with the product fit but it's a step up from there uh how does that uh, play out who's the watchdog for that how do you know what you can write what you can't write so i think as a creative person uh, that is something of deep interest to me and uh, you know are the authors of this work like be they agencies individuals are they also equally you know can can they be a grievance with them as well from a consumer so that's the large red flag that uh, i would like to you know sort of understand better and the light side i mean i find that the entire grievance redressal process has been simplified you know it's all online you can get your complaint through easily without much trouble but then is that going to burden everything so much because you know if i'm dissatisfied and it's so easy to express my dissatisfaction is it actually going to slow down the whole thing instead of uh, speeding it up i think these are my only two observations of you know 
that's it we'll come back to the larger issue uh, thanks a lot deepa thank you very much uh, sorry it was muted for a for half a second uh, but thanks a lot for your opening remarks uh, we will come back to uh, attempting to answer some of the questions uh, although what you mention as as a green light in terms of redressal i think uh, see one of the focal points is for the first time uh, there is a statutory recognition of consumer rights except for the right to clean environment which has been taken out uh, i think uh, globally what is recognized as right to redress is probably correctly formed here uh, in this new enactment and i completely agree with you there on that green light portion of it i said i'm going to i'm going to request madhukar because he's is kind of uh, ex president of uh, aski and has dealt with this subject a phenomenal kind of an uh, experience in the knowledge madhukar your opening comments please so was first of all <clears throat> thank you very much for this forum <clears throat> so let me begin by stating unequivocally that uh, i'm glad that this is one more milestone in the journey as far as consumer protection is concerned <clears throat> because remember in the country we've had the department of consumer affairs for years number one let's come to the industry in the industry as a matter of for for the sake of self regulation aski's been around for over three decades and aski's done an excellent job in terms of framing the advertising code framing the rules and regulations for what can be done cannot be done should not be done not cannot be done should not be done and also educating whenever there have been complaints initially it was on the basis of complaints but subsequently the so moto cases could be taken up but interestingly what many people might not know even being in the industry is that the department of consumer affairs and aski have been working together for the last 5 years you know because uh, the portal i think it was called gama grievances against misleading advertising uh people could go to the portal and complain and who was the department of consumer affairs directing the uh complaints to aski aski has addressed them i think somewhere i was checking yesterday about 15000 if i remember right or 10 to 15000 cases beat in thousands cases have been addressed for the last 5 to 7 years <laughs> so this act becoming a law is one more milestone as i say perhaps it will while i hear that uh, the ccpa is turning around and saying they'll develop their own advertising code i presume and i do hope that in the spirit of the way various other industries are working in terms of a public private partnership the government and aski works closer together because this will give more teeth to the uh, processing that has been done by aski today perhaps uh, uh, you know the ccp as the regulator will be directing the or will be directing the complaints it receives to either you know, the food related telecom related or anything related to the experts and the expert here there is a sitting expert here in terms of aski sitting expert who's been in the industry who's had uh, over three decades of experience who's dealt with thousands or tens and thousands of cases who could perhaps educate on it because it is not just a just the governing body of aski which adjudicates because it's a completely different body it's the ccc council and the ccc council has what about 60% or more of civil society representation so there is a framework which is working which is working very well the framework perhaps needed a little more uh, implementation teeth which this law now gives it so it's a it's a green light all the way and i presume people see the green light on the tracks towards public private participation too okay that's that's a very interesting thought i mean uh, i must say uh, you know although some of the some of the kind of comments that we have received on the on the consumer protection act is to say that since aski was a self regulatory body it didn't regulate itself too well or it didn't get consumers into its fold in terms of making sure that it's a holistic approach there and therefore government was forced to come out with 
another legislation in this space. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to kind of uh, you know pause there because that's that's one area, and we'll come back to it after we've gone through the opening remarks. Or you want to yeah, add I, now? I mean, no, I, no, I, I, I'll just I'll just add on. Sure. It is not a question of I think perhaps a little bit of misrepresentation in terms of ASCII not doing his job. You know, well, ASCII could adjudicate, but what about the implementation? What about the rectification? Because yeah. barring after the Broadcast Act came in, then the media could say that, okay, we won't carry this misleading ad on, on basis of advice from ASCII. But there wasn't the teeth that it now gets if this yeah. law is implemented. No, I so it's more a question of, which is what I said, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful building up. Ultimately, who wins? The consumer should win. Absolutely. Absolutely. So here okay. it's a question of who, how should the consumer win? You can take the residual knowledge and expertise from the industry. You can take the intention and the legal authority from the government, put it together and have a win-win situation. Sure. No, I take your point. That, that's, that's, that's a very good articulation. Uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to request uh, Mr. Sandeep Khosla, uh, uh, you know, although from a, from a media perspective, the law is what it says currently, uh, but what's your take? So uh, thanks to her. Thanks a lot for inviting me here. So let me just just step back a bit and uh, you know get into the whole uh, idea of advertising. You see, advertising has been working for decades, uh, as we know. Uh, there was a, there was a in 2017 there was a survey done in the U.S. as to the impact of advertising on consumers, and what they found was 90 percent of it worked as far as the impactfulness was concerned. Of these, what was varying thing after watching a, a particular commercial or an advertisement. Uh, 70, 60 percent from TV got in, influenced, 45 percent from print, 43 online, and social media was 42 the least. Now, even when the credibility suffered as far as the platform was con concerned, let's say social media has got the least credibility, uh, then and the highest is print in between somewhere the television. The advertisement never suffered any credibility loss because people believed in what they saw there. The moment you link it to uh, endorsements, then it, you had a winning combination. We all remember in the early 90s, correct, when Pepsi and uh, Coke came into India. Ramesh Chauhan's brands, the thumbs up, had 65, sorry, 75% of market share. Now, um, he knew that the two big giants coming into India would have enough deep pockets to give him a run for his money. So he sold out to one of them. But their entire basis was on endorsement. So one got... Uh, Amir Khan and Ritik and Bachchan and Aishwarya, the top ones to establish their brand. And within a small period of time, you had the best, uh, you know, of both uh, uh, catering to the Indian uh, consumer. Now, as for consumer the concern, and we can slice and dice them e either way. So you can start with children to young mothers to mothers, uh, housewives to, you know, students. But I'm not going there. I'm saying, if I were to just slice them into saying that the Privileged one and the non-privileged, so underprivileged or people who don't have access to too much of knowledge, that's where the problem for a consumer comes in. So the moment you look at, you know, the privileged class, we will never go and buy anything without actually looking at every other aspect of it. So whether you're automobiles, they have employed some of the best uh, band uh, endorsement from the best stars, whether it's from Bollywood to whether it is from the cricket field, yet uh, all cars haven't done well. But the moment you look at uh, people getting into products which are not for this class, then it starts becoming a problem. So you look at, uh, for example, the recent problems which happened in Gurgaon, in Delhi, and some years back in Mumbai, where uh, celebrities endorsed particular projects, housing projects coming up, and they were completely sunk because they decided that they, they, since there is a, this big figure of a famous uh, cricketer, Indian captain, uh, looking into it, uh, they, their money was safe, and that never happened. Uh, we, we, we look at you know look at look at our god of cricket endorsement and some of the advertising people would be happy as to how they associate. So when he endorses Boost, most of us say it's a brand connect. But when he endorses some like an inverter, we will not, uh, laugh at it. Not take a for the informed class will not take a decision. But somebody sitting in uh, a village in UP who has uh, doesn't have electricity for 12-13 hours will automatically think that just because he's endorsing this is a good product and uh, doesn't even know that he's. This endorser has never ever used an inverter in his life. So this is where the problem begins for that. 
and a famous case is the uh, the you know uh, the lucknow based tycoon who not only was uh, had a plethora uh, of uh, endorsements right from the bollywood to cricket uh, to every single sport but there was a lot of association with him which had a lot of innocent consumer investing their hard earned money in his fund and uh, we all know what the story uh, currently so uh, it is a double edged sword according to me at the moment there is one class of people which need to be protected but the creativity on the other hand is going to be always come under challenge and that's where i think uh, we'll see a problem what is the role of ascii who finally decides as to an ad is uh, creatively misleading or not whether it's damaging in the first place uh, if it is left to a district collector i don't know whether he is the best judge of it so there are various gray areas according to me uh, as i see uh, going forward Oh, no, no, thank you. Mighty. No, no, thanks a lot, Sandeep ji. I think you you looked at it from a consumer perspective as well. Uh, I mean, being also in media, uh, you know, before we before we kind of go across to Balki on his opening remarks, I'm going to request Pranesh ji to uh, kind of give his thoughts because he's been there in the industry for 40 years. He has seen everything, you know, very closely. Uh, so, Pranesh ji, your opening comments, please. Yeah, I'd like to uh, uh, use the slides that I sent, Mahek. Can you can you show those slides? So yes, sir. I'll I'll do that. I'll do that. Okay. okay so yeah. Yes. Uh, can you switch to the next one? Yeah. so i just wanted to um, raise three questions and i think uh, some of this have also been raised so basically is it self regulation or enforced government enforced regulation what is the best solution because i think the industry whether is advertising industry or the marketing industry they are interested in making sure that the credibility remains and that's why the all industry all sort of professionals set up a self regulation body so whether it is self regulation or enforced regulation or as madhukar was saying is it a is it a uh, combination of the two working together is neither either or or it's a and issue that's one question that i have the second question i have is if you're talking about consumer protection uh, why only advertising why why not every other communication media that actually affects uh, the way the consumer they makes decisions uh, and that's the second point i would like to cover and who judges i think um, a question was raised by uh, by the earlier panelist what who's the judges who's the jury how are we going to decide with, whether the ad is really truly misleading or not misleading if i could go to the next slide so uh, i think madhukar touched upon this very 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 uh, well i think uh, it is uh, act like this legality from the government gives a lot more teeth for implementation so one of the challenges of a self governing body is that uh, you can adjudicate you can say an ad is misleading but it's up to the up to the constituents to comply or not comply you know that that was one of the larger uh, one of the bigger challenges so you can say that yes this this ad should be pulled off but the the uh, the companies may may just sort of take their own time and then the when the broadcast act came it gave a lot of power to ask his decisions and it was a, a possible to do it i think the uh, legislation like this gives a lot more power for making sure that the ads or the communication that is seen to be misleading can actually be pulled out and i think what i'm seeing here is is not only pulled out which is already happening but also penalization of the culprits which is which is i think a very positive step in some ways because it will bring a lot more awareness to the endorsers to the companies that are creating the advertising the advertising agencies as well as the clients as to whether we will be in a bad shape so i think the consciousness and the awareness of doing the right thing doing the responsible thing will come through a lot more because of the teeth that the consumer protection act has we can move to the next slide uh and as madhukar is saying ascii has been doing it for 35 years 
uh, the, uh, the objectives are identical. Uh, the ASCII's objective is to stop misleading ads from confusing consumers and uh, leading up the wrong way. Uh, it's the difference between the Consumer Protection Act and ASCII is ASCII is very focused on communication and advertising communication. It has an independent jury, which uh, which Madhukar also talked about. So is it's probably not a either or case. Maybe there is a solution where the the, the implementers of the act and ASCII could work in tandem because ASCII has a lot of experience in making the softer judgment issues when it comes to advertising. So if I can move to the second question, next slide. The next slide is why is it only advertising regulation is the only way to protect uh, consumers. If you look at media today, uh, a lot of misinformation is being spread by a lot of people, the biggest of endorsers that you can see, some of the most powerful people are spreading uh, information which are blatantly be called out as lies, but there is no legal legalization. Is there a legal structure to sort of prevent that? Why is it that advertising becomes the soft toy or the favorite beating, uh, beating sort of area to sort of keep, keep bashing? So just to bring that to life, I would like to play a short video. Uh, from last week. Uh, next slide, please. Can you want your to uh, sound? No, the audio is not coming through. Yeah, just. Just those images are telling enough, you can know what follows. CNN, Daniel Dale, uh, Daniel, the Republicans uh, certainly kept you busy over the last two and a half hours. Jake, that was a parade of dishonesty. We had false claims, we had misleading claims, we had major strategic omissions, we had up is down revisionist history on the coronavirus and other matters. I think it veered at times into the, the realm of disinformation uh, even more than, than mere dishonesty. So voters are also consumers. Who's protecting them? And I've just taken uh, snippets from the American uh, channels, but I don't know. I don't think uh, anywhere in the world this is not happening. A lot of misinformation can be spread by the by the news media. Who's looking after that? Who's protecting it? Do they have a self-governing body? They they probably do. But is that governing body got teeth to implement and get responsible behavior? So that's the second question that I would like to see. Is, is it not right for the Consumer Protection Act to also cover the bigger media, which is the news channels and the, and the, and the media that propagates information? Because consumers take decisions on the basis of information. And the third point, which I'd like to move to the next slide, is essentially about, um, about who makes the decision. And I would like to show you two, uh, two ads which were just to be misleading and then come back for a little discussion. Next slide, please. Next slide. Next slide. Next slide? Yeah, Meg, Meg, go to the next slide and play the ad. So this is the specific claim by Duracell. Nice. Not only did Duracell make it look like you would have all of the fun and all of the lols with a fluffy pink toy bunny, but they also said that using a Duracell battery in said bunny would make it last much longer than had you used a different brand's battery. In 2012, Duracell was served up with a federal class action lawsuit for saying its ultra advanced batteries gave up to 30% more power in toys. But Duracell batteries keep going. In fact, depending on the toy, Duracell can last two, three, up to six times longer. Turns out the batteries were more expensive, but didn't actually last any longer than regular alkaline batteries. And this is the second one. Is of the Red Bull adverts.
Red Bull because he wins. Some fool called Beggarging Carrerathus sued the company after drinking Red Bull for 10 years and he didn't get wings. He was annoyed about this. Hmm. The company settled the class action lawsuit by paying out $13 million. This included $10 to every US consumer who had ever bought the drink since 2002. Red Bull gives you wings. Well, don't expect Red Bull to grow wings on your back and actually make you fly. It helps to temporarily restore mental alertness or wakefulness when experiencing fatigue or drowsiness. Just so you know. So, Red Bull doesn't give you wings? Next, you guys are going to be telling me that I can't captain a yacht or run down a mountain or lace carefree in a pool while I'm on my period. Wait, what? I can't? So, this is, I think, amplifying the point that uh, was being made earlier by Deepa. Uh, you could be very literal. I mean, advertising uses a lot of metaphors, a lot of exaggerations, a lot of uh, I ideas to make the idea come alive. But 99% of the people who see the Red Bull ad uh, don't expect to get developed wings. But even if you, if you don't judge it right, then you could actually get into a situation where somebody says that this is creating false misleading claims and actually the company apparently paid 13 million dollars to settle it out of court so who judges is is a critical issue how do you judge how do you where do you draw the line if it is a specific claim it's very easy to judge uh, if you're saying that i wash uh, whiter than the than anybody else i mean rather that washes clothes whiter than anybody else then you could actually provide scientific evidence for that and that can be tested but what about the claims which are done in poetry? What are the claims that are done in metaphors? How can you take the metaphors literally and then say that this is misleading? And that kind of misuse can happen if the non-experts with the, with the lack of guidance can actually get this very, very sharp tool, which is Consumer Protection Act, and start using it. That's my fear. That's all I had to say. No, no, thanks a lot, Pranesh. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we're going to kind of uh, look at what Balki had to say because you made a point in terms of uh, you know those claims which are not in true sense uh, product substantiable claims, so to speak. These are more on the emotional side. But uh, Mehak, if you can uh, kind of play the AV, what Balki had to say. Thank you. Yeah. actually very impractical this is a very impractical thing because uh, i don't think any celebrity is any expert on any product because how does a celebrity know uh, the scientific nature it is all about documents given by a client even if even he or she asks for um, you know a certain evidence this toothpaste does this or um, this soap does this or this hair oil okay a manufacturer is going to kind of provide whatever the documents that they have uh, and advertising obviously calls for a very uh, kind of an understood exaggeration of a certain kind of a nature, which consumers also understand. It's not that they don't understand and believe it 100%. But there is a way of talking in advertising, which is not necessary. It's a, it's like, a, uh, it's almost like saying that, you know, it's a bit of an exaggeration, but you know the truth. That's the kind of language advertising speaks. But... but um, if you were to come down on this, uh, on, on any endorser, then I, I personally feel that every ad should be actually first approved before it's even shot, before it even goes to celebrity by the uh, whatever authority and body that uh, has been legally set up to uh, catch people who are kind of uh, doing misleading advertising, who catch misleading ads. Why catch misleading ads? Why don't you just catch them before they become misleading ads and catch them before that and then only give it to a celebrity because a celebrity has got only one role. He brings his fame to a particular product so that people can buy that. All these kind of things should be addressed before it comes to a celebrity. You cannot hold a celebrity accountable. It's almost impossible for that person 
uh, to kind of even say whether this ad is misleading or not. It could be a very, very genuine looking ad. It need not even promise the earth. It could be a very simple thing that this gives you cleaner, whiter teeth. How do I know it gives me whiter teeth? I mean, how, am I supposed to wait for some 12 months to see the results on somebody that I choose to and make that person wash, uh, brush, brush their teeth with uh, every day with a toothpaste and say, is it whiter or not? How do I judge whiter? These are, these are, these are, you know, I'm talking of very basic things here, but these can get into kind of loopholes of un, uh, of bizarre things. No, no. So I genuinely, I genuinely believe this should be done before you go to the celebrity. Right in that, you know, if you want to, if somebody is making a claim, Ask, the, ask people for the relevant documents and don't pass the ad. Don't allow the ad to be even shot uh, till, it, till it kind of does that. So have a body which has got enough number of people to scan every kind of ad that, that is kind of going to be produced. That, that's the only way because if you can scan every ad after it has been done. So what are you actually doing? Then finally, you're only acting on complaints, if any. Uh, suppose there are no complaints and you, you're saying that none of the ads are misleading if there are no co complaints. That also is rubbish. And the other thing is, this could lead to tremendous competitive mischief of everybody kind of, you know, uh, taking on a competitor through this way, putting a block there, putting a block there. So you're just opening up avenues of uh, chaos. Um, I really feel that um, uh, unless there is some drastic claim that somebody is kind of making, which is kind of, which is like, some, like somebody says, this will prevent coronavirus, for example, tomorrow. Uh, yeah, you better check it out. Uh, before the person kind of makes the claim and may or doesn't add. But come on, yeah, it makes you look beautiful. It gives you cleaner teeth or whiter teeth. Or if it kind of, these are all, these are all very, very safe lies. I'm, I'm say, they may not even be lies. I, I'm saying they're just, um, okay, they're half truths. They're half truths. Let it go. We've lived with it and we all know about it. You know, yeah. of course. Yeah, so that's uh, kind of, uh bulky for us. I mean, uh, as always, a very forthright person. Uh, I'm, I'm going to move to the next kind of an issue, which I, and I think, Pranesh, uh, uh, you know, just kind of responding to what you had to say in terms of uh, the enactment and where, uh, where are these parallels being picked up today? If you look at the new Consumer Protection Act, there is a new product liability provision that has come in there is a new unfair contract provision that has come in. It's become a more holistic kind of a play there because you know for the first time we have aped um, US and FTC in terms of coming out with and legislating unfair contracts related provision. Again, this is only with respect to B2C contracts and therefore B2C contracts will now require a different scrutiny altogether. Therefore, there is a, there is a manner in which product liability has been implemented. And mind you, I think uh, the Indian legislations have actually picked up uh, and, and, and indigenized the wordings of uh, American Legislative Exchange Council's model law for uh, product liabilities. And, and I think uh, that's, a, that's a matter of different discussion on product liabilities. I will not get in there. But you know, there are some celebrities uh, with whom we talked, and I think uh, Sandeep alluded to some of them, is, they are saying we don't want to get caught into this uh, issue about uh, wrong endorsements. We would rather forego the opportunity today of making money. We'll use the same time because all of us know that the time is limited for every celebrity. We'll use that time to earn money somewhere where the, the, the risk of suing is not as high as probably in the endorsements. So, uh, Pranesh, what do you what do you think? Would you really see that the endorsement revenue is coming down, the business coming down, at least to a certain extent? Uh, I don't think it will come down. Uh, I think the endorsement, especially for the bigger stars, is a substantial part of their earning. I don't think it's a small part of their earning. Uh, I think what will happen is that they will probably ask for uh, more questions before signing the contract. And they will probably uh, also ask in the in the legal agreement some kind of indemnification uh, as well, to, just to protect themselves. Uh, that's that's the way it will go. So I think the positive thing is that they would they would question the claim before they make the claim. If they're asked to mouth a claim, they will question it, which is a positive thing because I think it makes everybody in the long, uh, line uh, honest and uh, sort of committed to to saying the truth. But I think the question I'm raising is. 
there is there is something that is black and white which is which is like uh, i i last longer than anybody else three times longer than any other battery it's provable and i help you develop wings is the is the is a metaphorical statement it's basically what our balke calls the half truth uh, or the uh, quarter truth and i think there has to be sensitivity to judge that difference and i think ascii has a team of very very good people from the civil society from the industry who would make that judgment because it is and that's the reason why i think working together with ascii is a good idea you know thank you very much uh, madhukar uh, i mean uh, <laughs> you know uh, two questions i think one is of course would would the would the business suffer would the business of endorsement suffer and secondly i think uh, you know touching upon uh, uh, what uh, pranesh alluded to is uh, would this this law today the provisions of this law today would they become hindrance for a for a creative license or creativity and of course or will it really boost the creativity because I, we have seen when there are adversities against you i think the creative people and uh, deepa will talk about it later on you actually come out with some of the wonderful uh, creative ideas and in adversity will it really promote the creativity hinder the creativity but will it actually affect the market okay you uh, thank you so as you got two questions then from balki's uh, uh, chat there are a couple of questions and sure. i'll try and they all they seem to be linked up it was particularly sparked off with what uh, pranishal excellently elucidated so i'll try and answer all first of all will it will hinder creativity no okay very very clear because uh, what would it uh, perhaps uh, amplify more responsibility i'm not saying that the process of creativity is irresponsible not at all it depends i mean nothing um, people try to fly everything in the name of creativity it's not i mean a good creative person is a responsible person very very clearly a good creative person will not put out anything that his own his or her own mother would not understand or like or anything like that let's be very very clear so creativity will not suffer that's leave that aside now so it's not a question of reassuring deepa but then it's uh, i'm uh, it's the profound belief in the people in the creative process and the creative people that they'll find new wings so leave that aside uh balki was talking of perhaps something akin to censorship in the sense of showing it you know earlier good old days of doordarshan we used to show the story about to doordarshan to get it approved only then went and shot i don't think we need to regress to that era uh at the same time uh this consumer protection act is a well meaning holistic act it's a question of there already amendments been made like you said whether they're clerical errors or what you just said i forgot the right legalese word that you used so i'm sure they will work it out i believe the advertising code is also been written now i'm sure they will examine codes existing in different countries and also perhaps work with ascii in terms of getting the code right but at the same time when it comes to endorsers i definitely have a point to make it's not a question of uh, first of all i disagree with whoever told you about the fact that you know we rather fold go our endorsement money uh, i'm sure you didn't speak to the right people because globally you take over even if you take a ronaldo or messi i'm not taking indian names what they get from playing fees is insignificant compared to what they make from advertising or we have to make from endorsement so a popular film star has been quoted on stage saying my ankle is up for endorsement every other part of my body is taken up okay so uh, it's easy money it's been easy money for endorsement today what will happen is the endorsers will need to perhaps be more responsible okay it's not me not fear be more responsible because they have been they have, they have treated as endorsers because they are celebrities they are celebrities because they have recognition they have adulation admiration otherwise they wouldn't be termed as endorsers now with recognition comes responsibility with adulation comes responsibility so perhaps an endorser will now 
have to take recourse to what has been wonderfully put in the Consumer Act, due diligence. Now, I know the due diligence there has come up thanks to well-meaning people from the industry itself. So an endorser will now be called to perhaps do greater amount of due diligence of the product and the claim is supposed to make. So it makes him that much more responsible. Uh, perhaps likely I could turn around and say, it's not easy money anymore. You just come in and do, uh, you just come in and appear for a few hours and make a few crores. There will be some amount of responsibility. Mm -hmm. Now who pays for it? I don't know whether the endorser will pay out of his well-earned huge check or would the advertiser have to do the due diligence on behalf of the endorser. But then the law is very clear that it has to appear that the endorser has done the due diligence. So that is very, very important. So creativity will work. The creativity will continue. There'll be greater responsibility in endorsement. And perhaps the consumer will not be led astray or in some of the areas that he's been led today. No, no, thank you. Thanks, thanks a lot for that view. And I think it's it's getting interesting there. Uh, because you see, I, I just want to uh, I just want to request Mehak to uh, to kind of play the AV regarding what yes. he had to say on the due diligences before we move on to uh, Deepa and uh, Sandeepji. Yes. Yes, because any any mining company can uh, bring a document and saying we've clarified this kind of thing. This is Correct. the test Correct. research that we've done. These are our factory documents. So these are scientific documents, and give it to the celebrity who will read it and say I verified the veracity of the claim. Is that what is verification of veracity? I mean, it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. I'm, I don't know where this is leading, and I think just think we're just trying to create more problems as if we don't have enough uh, uh, of. It. to do this man too much too much you know uh, uh, underdeveloped uh, department uh, and and uh, uh, we can never be regulated like this it has to be regulated at a very very different level it has to be regulated at the company levels it cannot be regulated in, in communication or these kind of, it has to be regulated at corporate levels. And I think instead of holding celebrities or something made for, uh, somebody has made a false claim, then you come down heavily on the company and set an example, that company will never make that product. So that company can never advertise that product again. I mean, make, uh, make it very expensive for the companies to kind of do misleading advertising. Don't kind of hold the system, uh, and I think you will find most ads are misleading. You know, it's not, it's that way if you look at it, there's not a single, there'll not be a single ad. Uh, if, if you say uh, Mentos and you say, oh, Dimaq ki uh, What is Mentos? It's not opening some brain of the, I mean, some pores of the brain. It's a, just a phrase of excitement. Everybody knows it's a candy. It's just, food. so what are you going to do? Are you going to say veracity of the claim? Does it really open up pores of the brain for you to think better? It does not. Come on. And Fevicol, does it stick so damn well that you can pull, I mean, like, uh, 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 you know, <laughs> can it stick anything in the world? It can't. Come on. Uh, and and, and um, you have cell phone networks, your people say, uh, let's say one says, <clears throat> and the network that goes with you everywhere. Networks don't, cannot go everywhere. There will be kind of dropouts every now and then. So these are things which are always relative, which are always taken with a pinch of salt, which are actually all you consumers get it. I don't think unless somebody makes a very, very dangerous claim or a claim that's incredible, then come on, come look at it. So show me the veracity of it. Come on. I think I think we need more watchdogs in that front. Uh, it's like censor boards. You know, it's like it's all these censorship of any kind. You, you let it go unless there's something that the whole world is up in arms and saying that, hey, how can this be so damn damaging to, okay, look at it. Even then, don't come down on it, but I just look at it at that point of time. And the same thing should go for it. You should just have uh, watchdogs if and when it's, uh, you know, required, not not uh, not coming down on every claim that's being made. Yeah, so I think, uh... You know, that's an interesting perspective, I must say. Uh, but I think I'm, I'm going to kind of request Deepa 
on the on the on these two points the creativity the the kind of uh, whether the markets will go down because there seems to be consensus emerging that the endorsement related markets are not not going to be adversely affected so on the creativity part uh, i don't think the question is about the quality of creativity i don't think that uh, so madhukar it wasn't uh, to answer you you know will creativity be go up go down good creative bad creative that wasn't actually the the question at least i started out with it was pretty much like this dimag ki batti jalaye it's nice to know till now ascii always used to let you know exaggeration hyperbole these were part and parcel of how we put things through and people use judgment now who is the watchdog and at what point uh, like you know how do we know what that will uh, what the playground is like you know what is considered misleading the who really did free once that find it easy work within that and do good work or bad work that will always be there so to my mind it's just uh, i'm curious to know uh, are we going to make uh, you know like like uh, balki was talking about the sense of, is it about the things that are really damaging come down on that and the rest should just be allowed to be and in fact uh, pranesh the red bull thing someone was telling me was a self done thing not actually a uh, consumer done thing so you know that's also interesting that's also creative in in its own way so uh, so yeah that's for the creativity aspect i don't think that's going to change but i think it's important to know what the playground is or is likely to be or we just find out as we go along if some people complain and then we figure out and it works itself out uh endorsements uh, yeah i don't think there's going to be any dip in it and there i agree with pranesh because i think if nothing there'll be more indemnity and they'll have indemnity clauses built in or um, you know to just sort of safeguard and yeah maybe they'll have uh, a, a stronger legal mechanism which is vetting legal documents now i don't know if that's a good thing bad thing or if you're adding to the machinery uh but i think it's an important thing and if you are going to endorse something and you do have the where to so have your legal team look at some legal document that some company has given you uh i think that's equally important and i equally think it's important that companies should be uh you know made really accountable so that they think twice before they share something with a celeb and say it's all legally verified and so just sign it see we've got it all down to the t so i think uh, there it's it's not a bad thing to uh, the endorsements are not going to come down and if nothing there's just going to be a lot more scrutiny of maybe the legal documents of companies by the celebrities legal teams uh you see i have i have a slightly different take there because uh, and i will i'll come back to sandeep ji or we will come back come to sandeep ji and then kind of i will i'll reserve my comments on that uh sandeep ji your take on the two elements so while i uh, broadly agree with all three that uh, you know uh, celebrities are not going to forgo the opportunity of endorsement i think they'll be more careful so as pranesh pointed out they'll be they'll be looking very closely at document they might have a special wing there they'll have to spend on lawyers extra and that's where you come in to ensure that you know the contracts are uh, far better than what they are today but i also believe that certain categories they are going to forego so for example high risk category and i mentioned uh, the real estate if you look at across the country uh, there have been various celebrities who have endorsed uh, projects and when the company is gone past who do you catch so i don't know what the provisions are as of today but if the company is gone past and there is a lot of money stuck off consumer then who become liable what is then the liability of an endorser so uh, maybe chit fund so there are i think going to be certain categories where they'll be very careful might uh, completely give a uh, you know bye bye to that particular category but by and large i agree with everyone else that uh, this will not come down uh, only the amount of scrutiny will be much more yeah see um, thank you thanks a lot sandeep ji i think my question to everyone would is going to be you know in a slightly different context today you see what's likely to happen is when we look at this legislative provision as a tool in the hands of the consumers somebody in a god forsaken place is going to say and sandeep ji i take your point 
I mean, if you have endorsed a particular developer or a builder or a particular education institute and made certain claims, you see, or uh, for that matter, one of the very popular products, which are like the inhalers or which are like, you know, popularly used as, uh, as kind of a hair oil and things like that. In a God for second place somewhere, somebody is going to play a mischief. And at some level, I think the regulators may look at it to say that we want to set an example here. While I can understand that due diligence and the documentation part could be looked at or there could be indemnities built in. But the prohibition from endorsing further products for one year and for two, two of the offenses for three years is going to be individual on endorser. That cannot be indemnified by way of an insurance policy. And therefore, when we look at unfair trade practice, I think we again copying it from F FTC there. There is, a, there is a provision of a class action, which is built in there. There is a provision by way of which you can actually say that in my district court, I'm going to make sure that the respondent is made liable. There are going to be mischiefs that will come out. There are going to be wrong examples. There is a possibility of a wrong examples being set out. I'm not, uh, and as a, as a kind of a typical lawyer, I know uh, I'm a bit cynical on some of these issues, but we have experienced that these things do happen. And in that situation today, I think we don't appear to be a very matured uh, consumer ecosystem uh, for this to kind of look at differently. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to request uh, Sandeep ji from your views first, and then we'll go around. So, um, so I agree. So look, uh, most of us haven't uh, you know, studied, at least not me, the entire act uh, properly. I have only looked at it from the media owner's angle by and large. But uh, it also says that beyond the point of time, an endorser also loses the chance of uh, uh, endorsing any other product for a certain period of time. Now, that's a, that's a clause which will make a lot of them worry, correct? Because uh, they're going to see as to if there is this clause. And, and like you said, uh, one is a mischief. But if somebody genuinely has a problem and then this goes on, uh, and there's a court case going on, somebody has to travel to a certain part of the country, there's again livelihood loss because you have been traveling to a certain uh, different state. Uh, all those are going to, going to make them uh, aware as to how do we go about it. So all these, I think, are going to be very seriously looked at by the endorsers. And like I said, I spoke to one of them, a very close friend of mine, and she did not want to come in onto the panel because she said, you know, I do not know how this is going to pan out. What is going to happen as far as uh, the entire, uh, as far as this is concerned. So, so I think this is something which I too early to take a call on. I agree that creativity will not suffer. I think India is one of the best creative uh, industry. We win far more awards from in Cannes than we ever did uh, earlier. So creativity is not going anywhere, uh, except uh, there will be certain checks and balances which will come. Thank you. Pranesh ji, your, your take on... Uh... You know, all India litigation. So I think uh, I don't know how it will be implemented. Is uh, you said that this could be a central body. So is it going to be centrally uh, litigated, or is the litigation going to happen in a district level? See, what's going to happen is you see, while the while the district commission, state commission, and national commission have been given certain powers and authorities. So if there is a claim up to one crore, is the district commission that will look at one to ten crores is the state commission. And 10 crore and above, the claim will be looked at by National Commission. Now, within the definition of unfair trade practice or the powers given to the District Commission is the power to take cognizance of misleading advertisements. Right. Within the definition of unfair trade practices. So, what's likely to happen is while on a national scale, the Central Consumer Protection Authority is going to look at it. If a single individual consumer has a grievance, he is going to file his complaint in his district forum. And that complaint will make allegations of unfair trade practice and via that misleading advertisement and endorsement will be brought into the, into the pore there. So that's how it's going to happen. Although the, the declaration of uh, an advertisement which is misleading or the penal provisions being invoked are available only with a central consumer protection authority. Right. But what it also means is that uh, the defend, defending of the, of the 
case would have to be done at the district level. Yes, some of the so, cases. Some, of, some the. of the cases. So, for example, then companies would have to be spending a fair amount of time doing that. And it, as Valky was hinting, it could become a competitive tool Correct. to put put competition in a disarray. You know, you can you can always litigate in one in terms of some district in Assam and some one other district somewhere else, and you can be just running helter skelter. So that's a that's a disadvantage of giving this power at a at a very very granular level. I think if I think the good thing about having a national commission is that there should be one point of education, not not two or three levels. Um, what I'm hearing is that there are three levels. There'll be district, there'll be state, and then there'll be uh, national. the national level. And we know how many cases are pending in the regular legal system. So to, yeah. to I, I see I, I see that as a big concern. I think what the act does is it has some really good uh, measures, but the implementation is what I'm really worried about because it can be misused. It could be a strong tool in the in the hands of people who don't understand advertising communication, and that's a very dangerous thing. I think it's uh, and that could be quite damning for for the for the industry. So those are those are my sort of red red lights uh, really <laughs> against the. No, no. Thanks and, a lot, Pranesh. Madhukarji, I think. Uh, see, I agree that with the tenor that teeth should not become fangs. That's number one. Okay. Number two, I know this progression from the district to the state level to the national level, but right now the powers are vested at the central level, fortunately. It also calls for responsibility as far as the enactment is concerned, very, very clearly. Will this be misused? Yes, I see it been misused because even in to a certain extent, every single for a uh, competition uses every opportunity possible. I mean, the very nature of definition of competition would mean all is fair. Uh, so, uh, so this will be there is a opportunity for misuse definitely. There's an opportunity for competitive pressures. Yes, there's an opportunity for certain. Uh, uh, stumbling blocks been put up. No yeah. debate about that. But I presume better sense will prevail. I only am an optimist in the sense that if it's been designed for consumer protection, the larger Consumer Protection Act will work very well. And I don't think it's limited only to advertising. It's limited to packaging. It's limited to product and everything else. For me, I see advertising as a part of an entire package product. So it's not, you're not signaling or advertising alone. There could be any other problems with any other product constraints. And it means a little more responsibility. I keep, I keep uh, wishing that this opportunity for people to be more responsible, uh, um, it's not utopian wish, is uh, taken on by everybody right up and down the value chain. Yes. No, thanks a lot. Uh, Deepa, your take. Yeah, sorry. So uh, I was reading this uh, article by a gentleman called Jangir Gai, and you know, it seems uh, it's quite staggering if you see the load already at a district level. And uh, so if we're going to add to that uh, a grievance redressal. It also includes the online e comm, everything. So it's like any level of dissatisfaction from home, I can you know, online book a complaint if it's below a certain amount. So I think there I would really, uh, I really wonder because I think a lot of people may, they may be just genuinely unhappy with what they got and complain. It's a genuine thing, but they may not uh, really know how to interpret like, you know, like which part of advertising is meant to be literal, which is just, you know, metaphorical. So I, that is why I began right in the beginning saying the green light part is, well, is this going to really slow and choke the actual redressal system? Because uh, anybody with a complaint anywhere can do it at a district level and they may do it with genuine convictions. But uh, how is it going to get addressed given the already, you know, backlog of of cases? So that was the only take I had. Yeah, that's that's that, that that I take. I think one of the suggestions, and Sandeep ji, I'm going to kind of look look upon you to uh, look at this suggestion. You know, if you remember the media, 
and the time started this and i think a lot of media followed it is creating an ombudsman because when when i think there were lots of complaints going against journalists and uh, uh, therefore the ombudsman as a concept was introduced in the in the media sector uh, so even before i think you a consumer goes to the district commission if he has a grievance about an advertisement if he goes to ombudsman and kind of create a barrier or let's say create one more avenue for redress or, or grievance without really it being a very uh, clearly a nuisance related issue would that something which is which could be looked at and and what has been the experience and uh, can it be then kind of now applied to new consumer protection law and uh, so on one hand like balki says you know something like censor has to be there for every advertisement coming in this is a buffer uh, is that is that something which you would recommend so uh, so suhas uh, ombudsman was only for editorial it was never in the first place uh, for advertisement uh, no I, marketing I, I, yeah no marketing or co would ever allow uh, you know an ombudsman to uh, look at what advertisement in fact uh, uh, the the non editorial side would push the envelope as much as possible because advertisement as you know are always in short supply and with this i don't see anything uh, there which is going to change however this was again still in print the moment you left print there was free for all correct we see what is happening today on every medium i mean you open five different news channels and you will get five different takes on the same subject uh, print is still quite sober now uh, again when you have like a body and like ascii who was doing this most uh, newspaper was still responsible and followed to a large extent what was uh, what was prescribed there i remember because right from my indian express days to my midday day i had a lot uh, of complaints coming in on certain advertisement and we promptly took action and these were more in the herbal space in as far as print is concerned you know or um, ads which were not the main line mainstream uh, as uh, like a red bull uh, or a duracell but these were these were essentially uh, the products which were so called fashion beauty or uh, healthcare uh, products which always had a problem because of the claims they made uh, i don't i don't think uh, that's going to work because again we're talking about cre- uh, creativity now uh, if it is not going to work with what aski is doing i don't see this working as far as the media owner is concerned and there's no one media owner correct we are talking about multiple some media owners are are not even full fledged professional in that manner because let's say outdoor where do you go there are so many fly by night uh, outdoor uh, supplier and of course they the big agencies have their own wing but there are so many there how are you going to control that or posters which uh, suddenly come up below the line is is completely uh, a lot of it is in the unorganized sector when we look at advertising we generally think about saying television to a large extent the print now it is all gone to digital but there are going to be different players how are you going to restrict what uh, so that i don't think optimum according to me uh, would work yeah thank you very much i think uh, you know before we close i would like uh, you know everyone and we probably start off with balki's closing remarks and then uh, kind of open up with uh, q and a uh mehak would you sure sure yeah you you found weapon we can sue we blurred but this we can so it is responsible uh, in a system that's already been choked up with very very valid cases which are not kind of be they are kind of getting into all this corruption getting into i i feel that in a kind of some very clear do's and don'ts uh, it's not about uh, let me monitor every part of it it's about you can't sue this don't worry you won't be sued don't worry nobody can do this stuff i just certain thing i think till our society matures till we understand this that the do's and don'ts must be very clear you can't cannot hold certain people accountable of course you should hold companies accountable if they are making very very false promises which are harmful to consumers of course companies must be held accountable you can't hold the advertising agency or the uh, filmmaker or the uh, Uh, actor is basically an actor and they want to celebrate i mean i can i, I suppose a, a guy who is not a celebrity for example and uh, you he's got a fantastic smile and the smile he catches but no one because he's got a little bit that crazy 
I mean, in the same by the same rule, any actor, like for example, I take a person from the theater, from the theater side, okay, or a or a qualified actor, and he does a particular product endorsement, and uh, it's a false claim, and you find out it's a false claim, you never even think of suing that person because you don't think he's a celebrity, and you, your justification there is I did not buy it because of him. I bought it because of the product and the offer that they gave me. But no, you don't know. He might have smiled very, very nicely for you to kind of buy the product. These are psychological uh, things that, that happen when you buy it. They're not necessarily celebrity. So the rule goes for a toss then and there. You know, uh, good acting also can make you buy a, a product. And okay. good acting need not come from a celebrity. What do you do there? Has anybody thought of these kind of things before you kind of hold people accountable? And what about a film? What about a cinematographer? If you have lit that product so beautifully that I want to buy, why don't you sue him also? What about a music director? You music for the product to kind of happen. Why don't you sue him also? Sue her also? And you sue everybody, no? <laughs> it, 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 there is no end to this. Yeah, there is no end. You know, <laughs> Entirely, because there are many, many things to motivate you to buy something, and every factor that motivates you is it wrong. If you do that, then there is. Sorry, your voice was breaking Hello? up. Sorry, missed the last part of the sentence. No, can you hear me now? Yeah, it's it's fine now. Now I'm saying, yeah, look at the whole, like I told you, uh, in an act film that there are uh, cinematographers, music directors, there's a director, there's a costume person. Sometimes you might just buy a product because you like what the model is wearing. Would you sue the manufacturer of the garment or the model who's kind of putting it? Why do you go after celebrities just because they've become easy targets today in, in the country? And what social media has done is make celebrities, it's just a kind of a stone throwing thing for cele on celebrities. You know, social media has become that kind of thing. Everybody kind of takes a pot shot at celebrities. So I don't think a law or a system of addressing consumer issues can be, you know, reduced to kind of targeting celebrities. I think that's a much serious, serious issue. You know, if a consumer is gypped, or if a consumer is kind of, you know, uh, harmed, or if an ad is kind of doing dangerous things, those are matters that should be addressed very, very seriously. Uh, they should not be coupled and confused with ads which are just making those sweet little half innocent lives and they're absolutely fine. Well, thank you. Uh, thanks a lot, Mehek. Thanks, Balki, for that, uh, for that issue. Uh, Sandeep ji, your closing remarks and I'm going to go across from Sandeep to Deepa to Pranesh and Madhukar ji, I'm going to come back to you uh, as, as last, last comments before we open up on q &A. Sandeep. Oh. So, sir, I, I, I don't completely agree with uh, Balki's view and, uh, and I can understand and appreciate because it comes from a creative field. I am not from the creative. I am, I am a, uh, you know, more from the sales and marketing side. But here I'm talking about this, the consumer. So I'm saying you cannot uh, have no liability for a star uh, or an endorser uh, and uh, business as usual because uh, like I began in, the, uh, in my opening remarks, it says that there is a gullible population out there mm -hmm. right, who only look at the uh, endorser and he believes credibility because it, it comes from the person who's endorsing it. I have again said that as far as the informed people are concerned, they are not going to buy without due diligence. But here is a lot which will happen as far as uh, the gullible uh, sort of... Uh, and, 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 and that's also true for our country because otherwise we wouldn't have banned liquor ads and uh, tobacco ads, correct? Because we believe that there is a uh, section of people who are always going to get influenced by this. Uh, and that's the reason why I believe that there has to be some responsibility which has to come in, uh, especially to the segment which is under, under That's my view. Thank you, Sandeepji. Deepa? So, um, I think uh, we're in this amber light, neither red nor green right now. And as this playbook unravels, uh, I think we're all going to learn and know because right now we're just hypothesizing of what if, what if, what if. And uh, I think it'll be a reality quite soon. It'll start becoming one soon. So wait and watch is where I am. Okay, thank you. Thanks a lot, Deepa. Pranesh ji? I think uh, there's a, I mean, I didn't touch upon the celebrity endorser because I think that's a sub point of the overall thing. But I, I think one has to look at uh, how the act defines an endorser. Uh, does an endorser have to be a celebrity or not? Mm -hmm. 
or is it a celebrity who has power, uh, visual uh, sort of uh, power, as, as Sandeep was saying, basically uh, has a lot more eyeballs. Uh, if he's a cricket star, then only he's a celebrity. If a small town uh, actor will not be a celebrity, I don't know how they define it. Uh, but I, I tend to agree that uh, the onus should be with the company which is spending the money on the advertising. I think that company, there should be one head to, to be there in the news. And if, uh, I don't think bringing in celebrities or endorsers into it, because there'll be so much of gray area, is a good idea as such, because uh, they, uh, they will have limited ability to judge the veracity of the claims made by the manufacturer. Uh, I think that's, that's really a big concern. Although they will ask the questions and they'll probably employ some legal help to make sure that they have seen to have done due diligence and so that they have the next escape clause. I don't see what purpose this solves. I think it seems like a political angle to say that there's a common belief that the celebrities make crores and crores of money, so we should make them responsible. You know, I think there is a, there's a fair amount of politics behind this enactment. Yeah, just to kind of uh, revisit, you know, uh, revisit on the on the endorsement. You know, the definition of endorsement is to say that which makes the consumer to believe that it reflects opinion, finding an experience of person making such endorsement. You see, that's that's a very broad uh, term there. So it does right. not it does not limit it to celebrity. Uh, it just kind of opens up anybody and sure, sure. So if a, if a, if an actor like to go back to some of the discussion, if uh, the celebrity comes in as an actor and is not endorsing uh, the the claim or he's not making the claim, then he should be out of out of fear, uh, out of danger as far as this definition is concerned. Yeah, I think there would be some gateways that we will develop. Uh, right, and we, and we will get developed. No, thanks a lot. Uh, thank you. Thanks, Praneshji. Madhukarji. Thank you. Uh, it's simple. I mean, a lot has been said around. Uh, while I agree with uh, Deepa's statement of amber light, best definition possible, uh, I would like to, I mean, I, I sort of disagree in a way with what Balki was saying. You know, we are not mature yet. Uh, I don't think, I don't think I've given to that because uh, Perhaps this is the beginning of the maturity uh, of the entire economy also, never know. Also, this is an overall consumer protection act. At least you have one today. And obviously it's been put in there, uh, whether political or whether any mass representation has led to this, because it was in the making for a long time that has finally happened. So in a way, I welcome the fact that the act has to be established. I would also welcome the clarifications and the interpretations and the and the codicils that follow. And also welcome that. But overall, I'd like to stress on what I began with. It means responsibility. There is responsibility as far as the district manager magistrate is concerned. There is responsibility as far as the CCP is concerned. Responsibility as far as the endorser is concerned responsibility as far as the manufacturer is concerned because ultimately the consumer has to benefit. So for me, whatever ultimately benefits the consumer is good. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think, Meg, do we have uh, questions? Can we actually... Yes, we do not have questions. We have like eight questions. I'll take it one by one. The first question is from Indranil Shendi. His question is in the definition of goods, food is also included. Food as defined under FF, FSSI. For food related misleading advertisement and claims, there is already a specific regulation, that is, advertisement and claims regulations, where penalty is only by way of a fine and under the CP Act of 2019 for false and misleading advertisement. It specifies imprisonment and fine for food, as we have specific regulation, which regulation will prevail the advertisement and claims regulations for or Consumer Protection Act 2019. 
uh, sorry, I will take that uh, question uh, very clearly. I think the Consumer Protection Act does not have a provision which is non abstentive overriding provision. It does not say that in the event of conflict or inconsistencies within two laws, the Consumer Protection Act will have overriding effect. That provision is missing in the Consumer Protection Act. In fact, the Consumer Protection Act says that this has to be read in conjunction with other laws. So this is in addition to other laws. And most of the industry specific laws actually have an overriding provision in the event of conflicts and inconsistencies. Therefore, we will have to go by the industry specific regulatory law. Uh, in this case, it will be FSSAI to see whether in FSSAI there is an overriding provision. Insofar as my recollection goes, there is an overriding provision under FSSAI law and it's a special law. Therefore, it will uh, override the Consumer Protection Act. So you'll have to look at FSSAI and not the Consumer Protection Act. But thank you for asking that question. Meg, can we? Yeah, next question is, uh, how is the due diligence immune mechanism going to look like for celebrities? That the question is from Sandesh Kasabi. Anyone uh, taking this question? Uh, can you repeat the question, uh, Mahak? Uh, we couldn't hear it. Yes, yes. How is the due diligence immune mechanism going to look like for celebrities? Yeah, the due. I think we talked about it. The due diligence would mean I mean um, for them to to be able to. I I guess they'll have to spend more time on looking at the contract. Uh, they would have to say, ask questions about what is the claim that you want me to endorse and what is the proof behind it. Uh, they will have, obviously have to go through whatever documentation is offered to them. Uh, but the contract would, would probably say that this documentation has been offered. And uh, uh, so I think the contract would become a little bit more detailed in, in the uh, post this, this act, I, I would imagine. See, yeah, thanks a lot, Pranesh ji. I think, uh, you see, uh, Sandesh ji, actually there is no immunity. Okay, the, the, the language in the, in the act is that, that this is your defense for endorser to say that I, I did conduct a due diligence uh, when I entered into the contract for endorsement. And so to that effect, there is no immunity mechanism. It only is a defense. If there, is a, if there is a case filed against you, I think this is a defense available for you so that you will not be penalized or you will not be prohibited. I think it works that way. And I think uh, over the period of time, you see, what we used to do as lawyers, you know, whenever ASCII gave show cause notice to clients, I think we used to actually look at what are the substantiation of the claims in the advertisement, look at the product claims and substantiate it. I mean, th that now becomes a a pre-engagement or so to speak, even pre-release of the ad as a due diligence that endorser will have to do. So we'll have to see how this progresses further. If anyone Anish, panelist... Actually, if I would like to add that, I think the companies uh, will be doing a lot more, will be bringing in a lot more rigor for getting legal and technical clearances of the claims. The claim approval process will become a lot more robust from the company's perspective. Because ultimately, it's not only the endorser. In fact, the first head to roll would be the company. And uh, there is a provision for imprisonment of, of the senior officers of the company. So I think that that would mean that I, already the company would be doing a fair amount of that groundwork. Sure. Anyone else wants to add to the answer? Sure. Uh, Meg, can we move to the next question? Yes, yes. So, uh, next question is from Parodhan Chandrake. Uh, agreed on the points for consumer and celebrity protection. What about protection to an honest brand from credibility damage and business loss due to any wrongful actions of the celebrity? Can the legal media insurance polls work on the on a sub, on some solution here? <laughs> Thanks a lot, Colonel Chandrake. Uh, 
thanks for asking this madhukar ji you want to take this question uh, very it's very difficult i don't know i ran into some co- i ran into some connectivity issues can you just give me the question again yes sure uh, what uh, colonel says is that agreed on the points of consumer and celebrity protection but what about protection to an honest brand from credibility damage and business loss due to wrongful actions of celebrity <laughs> can the legal media and insurance world work together to give some solution <laughs> and this is the point partly what sandeep you also mentioned you know if i have to understand you know, a brand takes on a celebrity and then damages itself <laughs> uh so then obviously simple the brand took the decision to take on this celebrity so how can it claim for damages from a decision that it's taken by itself i don't <laughs> know whether i've understood it right or no no i think i think probably what colonel uh, seems to suggest is that if 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 let's say the celebrity misbehaves way down the line you know we have these provisions under the endorsement contracts very clearly built in as to what happens if 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 let's say celebrity starts Uh, you know, disparaging something somewhere. Yeah, so that is worldwide pheno- phenomena, correct? Uh, so as it happened in India as well, where uh, Thumbs Up gave up their uh, leading uh, brand because uh, the brand ambassador uh, fell into some uh, odd court cases, and worldwide that's a phenomena. So brands drop uh, the celebrity immediately on on terms of wherever there is a problem. So I think that is. Uh, always done across uh, the world yeah yeah i think uh, two things i think one of course there is no uh, there is no provision currently uh, for uh, under the consumer act or anywhere uh, in terms of for the companies to claim the damages for their loss but uh, there is always a possibility you can stop the ad you can withdraw it you can you can cease and desist from releasing it i mean therefore from the from the manufacturer or the company perspective I think there are various options open. Yes, Mac. Can we move to the next question? Yes. Uh, there's a question from Mena Susan. Can terms and conditions protect the product and company from nuisance and frivolous suits? Okay. Uh, yeah, Mena is very loosely. I think I would say that. The, the terms and conditions which are fine prints are never going to come to your rescue because these are statutory provisions which have come into the fold whether it is unfair contracts whether it is endorsements misleading advertisements they will be considered as statutory and i don't think your contracts and contractual terms and conditions will any longer save you thanks for asking that question um. as a question from milanjin what is the global experience in this context do other developed countries have similar legislations pranesh you want to take it or deepa you want to take it uh no i i i do know and i think madhukar can actually uh, yeah. give more more perspective on this because i think uh, self governance in advertising industry is a global phenomenon that we are aware of and i think uh, aski is is a member of that there's a federation of self governance bodies and i think it's it's a universal phenomenon uh legislation i'm not aware of i'm sure there would be some some degree of legislation but i'm i must confess i'm not aware of what is the level of, of legislation there are there are there are uh, uh, countries which have uh, a department of con- uh, consumer affairs and which have had consumer protection acts there have been virtually sure me most countries have had this uh, i presume we've also been inspired by that and we've also uh, studying the various codes that come under those acts and that's what's happened currently i know that the advertising code is getting written it hasn't happened yet is getting written by referring to acts in uh, the uk us new zealand etc yes that's right i think uh, any any uh, additions deepa sandeep ji no okay oh, uh, uh, sorry yeah, uh, i i think yes i agree that there are there are already laws but then i think uh, a, a lot of uh, misleading like we've seen in a couple of examples there are a lot of class actions which happen which uh, 
then are far bigger repercussions on uh, the product and the manufacturer than what we have uh, seen in India happen earlier. So there are there are those additional uh, protections in a lot of those countries. So as I just need to add one thing. Uh, I know I've heard a lot about uh, uh, you know whether the FTC and various others being there in other countries, but the celebrity angle is something very new. It's unique to India, I guess, because we uh, we really well in it or uh, we overuse it or whatever like that. Uh, I guess this is something new here. There's going to be a lot of learning as far as uh, uh, the celebrity is concerned. Because I don't think there are parallels everywhere. Yeah, I think uh, one, of course, in terms of the enactment itself, there are uh, there are unclear guidelines. You see, UNCTAD guidelines in terms of uh, consumer laws, where uh, they pushed all the signatories to actually have their municipal law aligned with the guidelines that UNCTAD has has prescribed. Uh, one of the obscure provision is there about responsible advertising within it. Uh, which, which talks about various elements, qua the consumer rights uh, on the responsible advertisement part of it. Now, uh, what has happened is there are model legislations in the US that talk about the responsibility of the endorser and endorsement. Most of the states have not implemented it as a legislation, uh, but it's there as a model law prescribed by some association or a body. Uh, you know, these words, which, which you find currently under the Consumer Protection Act 2019, uh, I tried to find the origin of it, and they, there is some kind of a origin in some of those model laws that have been prescribed in the US, but not all states have adopted it. You see, uh, because obviously it, it appeared to be completely one-sided and not a very balanced provision. Uh, this is the genesis uh, that I, I could decipher uh, through the research. But there, each and every signatory to UNTAD is committed, and I think there are more than about 60 countries today that have legislated Consumer Protection Act. And within Consumer Protection Act, all the consumer rights have been brought in as a statutory right of a statutory force. You see, uh, International Organization of Consumer Association, which is IOCA, which we talked about in terms of extract consumer rights and converting them to contract rights uh, or concrete rights, I'm sorry. Uh, we've been, as consumer activists, I think there are various consumer activists that have fought through uh, 1984 onwards. Uh, this is found place because there is an UNCTAD and India is a signatory to that uh, treaty. And that has forced us to bring this out as an enactment because I think we've given some commitment of getting our municipal law aligned to UNCTAD. And that's why probably even during the lockdown, we've seen this be getting uh, effected. That's that's my take broadly on, on the international perspective. Thank you, sir. So there's one more question on the chat box from Mr. Arantubani. Um, the question is, we see many celebrities endorsing products from herbal hair oil to TV sets. The celebrities add huge cost to the product they endorse. Why should consumer make the celebrities richer and get highly exaggerated claims of the product? The act does not address the issue of price consumer pay. Yeah. Hello. Who would want to take this? Uh, let me attempt it, though Pranesh is the right person for it. Pranesh, you'll have to correct me or add on to it. Uh, I don't think, you know, a product becomes more expensive, uh, or I don't, I don't, I don't think an MRP is worked out on the basis of how much is going to be paid to a celebrity. Perhaps an MRP is worked out on the basis of what allocations are going to be made for various things. So it doesn't have to do anything with the choice of celebrity or otherwise. It doesn't. It doesn't mean that uh, just because a celebrity endorses a product, uh, it's more, more expensive. Very very clearly. No, no, thanks, thanks. So I, I think that question is wrong. Yeah. 
Pranesh? No, I, I would agree. I think uh, celebrity using a celebrity is one part of the strategy. There is the brand, the packaging, the product that goes into it, the distribution. Uh, and I don't think the fact that you're you can't be having a product selling at 10 rupees and just because you bring in a celebrity, you start selling it at 15 rupees. That's, that never really happens. And it's very, even if it happens, it's very difficult to just establish what is the interaction there. And, uh, and the celebrity doesn't usually stay, stay forever as well. So a brand's pricing strategy cannot be therefore be dependent on the celebrity per se. So, um, I think implicit in the question is that if there is a damage caused, if there's a, it's not about the price being paid in terms of the physical price being exchanged, but if there is a damage caused that you, you bought because of the celebrity and it harmed your skin, the celebrity might walk away what, what happens to the consumer. If that is the nature of the question, then the question of compensation to the consumer who got, I think the Consumer Protection Act covers that beyond advertising i think in a sense that if there is a damage the product cause causes to the individual or causes loss to the individual because it's followed that then the consumer should be protected so i think that provision is probably beyond advertising that's right sandeep ji your back so, uh, so, so look uh, normally where are uh, celebrities in the product life cycle you would essentially use to make your product popular at the first instance, at the launch itself. So that's where a lot of premium products come in. And uh, there is sometimes a premium pricing because you are spending heavily on advertising across. And that's how you build your uh, brand and make it popular across the country. And that's where sometimes you see that, you know, certain, uh, and, and I do keep on going back to this example of, let's say, housing societies, whether a DLF in uh, Gurgaon, Delhi, whether it was Lodas and others, they use this very extensively. So other builders, properties next to them, couldn't generate as much as suddenly some of these could because there was this uh, celebrity endorsing. Sometimes Mr. Bachchan, sometimes Aisha Rai, sometimes uh, uh, you know Akshay Kumar, and and that's where they build a premium to the brand. That's what Lux has done over the years very successfully, and uh, there is always a premiumness which comes in into a product. But uh, it, it again at the end of the day would be market fu function would control that uh, beyond a point of time can you get away with a higher pricing for your product in a similar market. So, it's what it's yeah. my take. Deepa? Oh, no, I, I think I'll pass this one. Okay. No, thank you very much. Uh, I think, uh, Mac, are there any other questions? No, sir, we have answered all the questions. Yes, yeah, sure. Thank you very much. I think what I'm going to conclude by saying is, is, is one thing, you know. You see, if this regime today, and Madhukarji, I completely agree with you, it's a step forward, it's in it's in you know, focusing consumer. Consumer is at the center of the entire legislation plus the economy today, broadly speaking. If that be the case, and if this step makes every manufacturer, service provider, advertiser, endorser more responsible in nature, then I think it's a step in, in a step forward. And I think last part of it would depend on the implementation. But there is one element the law is missing today, which is the consumer, which is the consumer rights being uh, recognized, but right to environment missing out there. We have seen that whether it is packaging today or whether it is uh, products being developed today, there is a lot of sustainability from ESG perspective being brought in towards responsible business. We know for sure that all the major FMCG players are looking at how do you make sure that there is a sustainable packaging? How do you make sure that we look at products through circular economy and green chemistry? I think that's where uh, I would say there is an opportunity which is, which is a bit lost here. Because there was an opportunity that, for example, if instead of saying that uh, the due diligence becomes uh, a defense available, if you actually demonstrate that as a responsible business, that you have embraced uh, circular economy, in developing your products, I think that brings in sustainability all across. And that sustainability will give make the businesses more responsible, where I think probably in terms of giving credits to the companies, advertisers, endorsements, uh, could have been a possibility to come out with a far-reaching far, far -reaching law 
which will make businesses more responsible is it's frankly my take here but i'm i'm happy to get corrected by any one of you that's the that's the larger larger play so has but uh, since you were ending i think i'll connect with you immediately after this call because uh, i want to know how to file a file a complaint as far as consumer protection is concerned because suddenly my wifi dropped and i had to switch to a hotspot so i'm the affected party for five sure thank you thanks a lot so excuse me I guess I'll, I'll be. I will come back. No, no. Thank you. Uh, thanks a lot, Madhukar ji. Uh, your frame has frozen, and your voice is also kind of gone. And we will sue. We will sue your uh, service provider. Uh, I mean, thank you very much, Madhukar ji. Thanks a lot, Pranesh. I know you're busy. You're traveling to the US, and I think we caught you last minute to uh, with a request. thanks a lot deepa thank you very much thanks a ton for joining us uh, in this panel and making it more wholesome if i were to put it that way uh, sandeep ji thank you very much uh, thanks thank you for inviting for, no no you are always welcome uh, i think this is probably the 25th uh, webinar that we've had during lockdown on various topics all of them are recordings available we'll make the recording also of this webinar available uh, but thanks a lot stay safe uh, stay healthy thanks a lot to all the part, all the audience and participants thank you very much yeah. thank you to everyone thank, thank you, you guys thank you for your thank you thanks thank you